Follow American Hostage on Amazon Music to binge all eight episodes right now. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 2. The Man with the Microphone. Radio Indiana. WIBC. Indianapolis. America was built on values, on ideas and ideals, truth, liberty, and apple pie. But somewhere, by the people, for the people, became twisted by the media, that noblest institution which was meant to connect us and unite us as a nation. But it was a circus, of course, and you either watched it with fascination, or you became part of it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What in the hell do you mean you've already talked to him? He'd been calling us non-stop for the past hour. Yeah, Fred, because he's a psychopath. And now you've Jim, engaged directly with a psychopath. Jim, he wants me to interview him. Jesus Fred. Christ. Fred. Yep. Not now, Sally. Just wanted to tell Fred that Leo Malone's on his way to the station wait, right wait, now. Wait, wait, Thank you, Sally. How much time before we have to get back to him? He said we have an hour to tell him our decision. I can't believe you took that call. Well, I'm sorry, Jim. What's done is done. You no. don't have any idea what you've done. What was I supposed to do, Jim? What were you supposed to do? Are, are you asking for a list of ethical responses to this crisis? Because I Jim, can assure you, look. calling Tony Karitsis wouldn't wait, make my top wait, fucking ten. Wait, why are we calling Tony Karitsis? We aren't. Fred already did. What, for... For a quote? No, not for a quote. He wants to put him on the air. He's demanding to be put on the air. Well, why does he want us? He's a fan. Fred... No. I don't know. Come no, I, you, I got us yeah. an in Wait, with this a fan guy. And of us? You are full of shit, Fred. Have you seen this guy in action? Have you have you heard him speak in public? He doesn't trust the system, but he needs an outlet. That outlet is us, Fred. Every other word he speaks is fucker shit. Look, you, you see this? You get the fuck away from me, motherfucker! You're looking for an opening, and there is no opening. You don't get near. Wish has been playing it on a loop all day. If Wish is getting away with it, then why can't we? No, I talked to Dale Simpson at Wish earlier. They aren't getting away with it. Take a good look at that contraption around Dick Hall's neck, Fred. You don't build a death machine for a negotiation. Jim, we're talking like Dick Hall is already dead. Dick Hall is dead. No, he isn't. His brains haven't left the building yet, but they're on their way. Fred. I have been at WIBC for 20 well, years, Jim. Here we go, a legacy speech. And not a speech. single one of your predecessors would have sat on this. All right, Fred, I'm going to be perfectly blunt. Speaking directly to the hostage taker is a disaster of epic proportion. Look, we can sit around and debate the ethics of what I did, or we can get to the business of saving a man's life. As the station manager, the choice is yours. <sighs> well, we can't do it live. The compromise is we uh, we record it now, push it to the 11 slot. I don't see Trigger Happy Tony reacting well to getting the graveyard shift. He's lucky we're entertaining any of this at all. He's lucky? Look, Sally's right. I don't want to do anything that's going to piss him off. He wants it live. I think we should give it you to him. You can't negotiate with this guy, Fred. All right, let's go over the scenarios. All right. Number one, he kills him on the air. Okay, we'll be shut down. Liable on numerous levels. All right, number two. Number two, turns out to be a pleasant guy. Listens to reason, he lets the hostage go, everybody wins. Number three. Number three, he doesn't kill him, but he doesn't let him go. Then what? Does Fred Heckman just keep waiting by the phone for hours, for days? This is the job. That's the contract we make. You're making yourself the story, Fred. Jim... I'm trying to do the right thing here. We are Dick Hall's best shot at survival. All right. Now we're here, Fred. <laughs> you're at the station. And let's be clear, you're skipping a lot more than just an anniversary. This could be hours. This could be days. What are you going to tell Barbara? I don't know. <laughs> you can uh, call her from my phone. You got your story, Fred. 
I'm just not sure you understand the price. Okay. Folks, we got an update. Hey, hey, now, listen up. Heckman Residence. Honey, it's me. Really? Yeah. Uh, sweetheart, there's, uh, there's been a development in that uh, Tony Caritzis ordeal. Mm-hmm. Well, did he shoot him? No, no, he didn't shoot him. He, <laughs> he called the office. He called the office? And someone picked that phone up? Well, yeah, someone had to pick it up. Well, who picked it up, Fred? You know, it turns out he's a listener, a loyal listener. Uh-huh. And he uh, <laughs> wants me to interview him. You can't go down there. The news says he's got his apartment building wired no, no, to blow. No, 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 no. I, I wouldn't go down there. I'd do it from here. But they, you know, this is where they need me. And there's no way of knowing for how long. Are you upset? I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into, Fred. Oh my god, you're not wrong there. Is there anybody else? It doesn't look like it. I see. Well, um... You know, I... I can't be upset. You know I'll make it up to you. Yeah. We're always making up the time we've got for the time we don't. (laughs) I'll be coming home as soon as I can. Be careful, Fred. I love you, honey. Mm-hmm. I love you, too. Fred, Leo Malone's here. <sighs> okay. Thank you, Sally. He does have a background that explosives. This might not be an idle threat. That's correct. We uh, discerned from some friends and relatives earlier on, and uh, Paul found out from somebody else that he could have been a weapons Gentlemen. Fred, this is Detective Leo Malone. Right, we spoke on the phone, Detective Malone. Fred, just call me Leo, please. Leo was the first one on the scene this morning. Hell of a thing. I tell you both what, I've never seen anything like it. Guys, we need to jump right into it. Leo, you know about the call. Right, right, yeah. So what do we need to be doing to do this straight? You know, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't entertain this, because it's only going to bite us in the ass. Well, Leo, we already said we'd get back to him within the hour. Yeah, yeah, I I wouldn't have done that. Well, we did. Uh, Yeah, Fred did. So is there another move here? I'm sorry, we got about 15 minutes left to call. What does he want, Leo? Well, here's what we know from Dick Hall's father, Bronson. Apparently Dick and Bronson had been working with Tony for a few years now and had loaned him some money to fix up a plot of land that Tony was going to try and turn into a strip mall. Tony couldn't. The Halls needed their money back. Tony didn't have it. And here we are. Well, that seems pretty cut and dry. Yeah, but you tell all of that to Tony and he goes off, saying it's not the whole story and they were cheating him the whole time. But he won't give us anything new or different. Well, my understanding is that this is the stuff that Tony wants aired out in the interview. Well, let me stop you right there, Fred. There is no understanding, Tony Caritzis. I've been talking to him through walls and following him around in a blizzard since 8 this morning. His mouth never stops moving and not a single coherent word comes out. So don't go in making any kind of assumptions, because they're not going to play. I mean, the more I think about it, the more nervous I get. Leo, we're at your discretion on this. You're the expert. I'm no expert. I've never encountered anything like this. Uh, Where is Dick's father? Uh, On vacation in Florida. Lucked out. It's going to be him walking around with a shotgun tied to his neck. Do you think Tony, uh, likes you? Does he like me? Yeah. Can you get a read on how he feels about you and the police? He likes me as far as I haven't fucked it all up. I mean, he keeps saying how much respect he has for cops, and then he calls us sleepy-eyed motherfuckers, which I guess is anti-Semitic or something. All all right. Uh, What do we not need to be saying to him? What have you talked about that set him off? Uh, Oh, 
Don't say anything about his father. It blows up when you talk about his father. Okay. Well, what else? Does he have any family he does like? Or anyone we could talk to? We're flying his brother Stephen in from Brown County right now. Does he like his brother? I guess we're going to find out. Leo, tell it to us straight. Should we do this? I think Dick Hall's as good as dead. So what could it hurt? Okay. Uh, Jim, I guess we should figure out the logistics of that interview. You need to... Uh, you need to convince him that we can't do it live. Give us an hour or two to edit it. We can shave off some of the language, maybe keep our listeners from running into the hills. God forbid he doesn't blow Dick's head off in the middle of it all. Okay. Leo, will you stay in the room with Fred? We'd appreciate your insight. Sure, I can do that. I had Jane set everything up for you in the studio, Fred. It's, uh, it's good to go. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll, uh, we'll get to it. If you're looking for a new podcast that explores real-life crimes and scandalous careers of the world's most popular celebrities, you should check out the latest season of Amazon Music's podcast, Badlands. Stick around until after this episode to hear a preview of Badlands. You got it, Fred? <sighs> yes, sir. I got it. Thank you, Leo. Hello? Tony, it's Fred Heckman. I tell you what, I'm glad you called. Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Tony... You can't play cards for shit. I don't know if he's I, losing I, on purpose. I, just, I can't hear you too well. I said I'm glad you called. Because Dick can't play cards for shit. I don't know if he's losing on purpose or not, but I hope so, because I don't see how you can be so shit at cards otherwise. Well, you're playing cards, so things are going okay. They're as good as they can be with all of this, Mr. Hickman. I still have to talk to Dick and cops all day, and I tell you what, I got a lot of respect for cops, but these ones are dumb as shit. They yap their little jaw silly, but they don't say shit. Well, I think they do want to help. Too. Those pigs just get me hopping mad. Now... We gonna do this interview, Mr. Heckman? I got it all written out, everything I wanna say, everything I need to say, I got it right here, right here in my pocket, right here. Well, Tony, uh, I did, uh, I did talk to my guys here at the station, uh, about your request. Yep. And they think it's okay, and they've given us the go-ahead, but we do have to talk a bit about just how it's all going to happen. Hey, hey, I can tell you that. You're going to ask me all the questions I want you to ask me, and I'm going to answer them. Well, what, what we talked about over here was uh, doing the interview now and then playing it tonight at 11, so you'll get the last broadcast of the night. Tony? Tony, you there? No, that doesn't fly. Well, it's a good slot. No, I mean, no, it's, that it's... doesn't fly, goddammit. Now, I told you that. I don't like to repeat myself, Mr. Heckman, and you're going to make me repeat Crap. myself. Uh, hold, hold on there, Tony. Number one, I said I wanted my interview live. Live. Do you understand what that means? I know you understand what that means, so why the fuck do I have to ask that stupid question? Tony, let's two. just uh, take a two, step back. Two, I'm not doing an 11 o'clock time slot because the time isn't worth a hooker's tit. It's a goddamn Tuesday night, and everyone I know goes to sleep at 10 p.m. This is a working town, a no-nonsense town, and there isn't anybody up at 11 p.m. doing anything. Him. Have them talk it out. Okay, now, Tony, hang on. Hang on. Just hang on. I, I understand your concern about the... about the... Uh, the time slot now can you can you talk to me about about why you think it needs to be live because i know you can edit that shit and make me say anything i know i can say well, the tony, prettiest tony, words in the whole goddamn english language and you'll cut it and splice it together and make me sound like a goddamn nut job i know you can make it so that i'll say i'm gonna kill this fucker and what they're here is i'm sorry i'm just an old crazy man but i'm not crazy and i'm not old i'm 44 fucking years young and i broke my back to get here and make something of myself in this country Tony, look, we, we simply don't have the uh, technology to do what you're you're saying. I mean, we like to think we're the best at what we do, but we're still a humble little 
station. We're not we're not the movies. Get get them to talk about yeah. that. Do you like movies, Tony? What? The, the last movie I saw in the theater was Goldfinger, and it was the worst thing I ever seen in my life. Hmm. You don't like James Bond, Tony? He can't keep his goddamn shirt on to save his life. Okay, well, what do you... What is it you like, then, Tony? Do you, do you like John Wayne? No, I do not like John Wayne. Movies put in all that effort to try and make me like someone who can't shoot straight and looks like shit on a horse. I don't understand it. Well, now you know there's a new James Bond now. Well, say, say what now? There's a new James Bond. A new actor plays him. Does he take his shirt off? Sometimes. Then I don't give a shit. Okay, okay. So you don't like James Bond and you don't like John Wayne? No, I don't. But my father liked John Wayne. Oh, is, is that right? Well, what do you like? He then? took me to see The Searchers four times in theaters. Most boring fucking thing i ever seen in my life. And I was 23 or 24 at the time, but he just can't leave me the fuck alone. He was a controlling, desperate, sad piece of shit. You ever seen The Searchers? Away from this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. What did you think? Well, honestly, I, uh, I, I don't remember much of it. That's because it's shit. He didn't have any taste in anything. He, he knew how to break my back and bust my ass, and that's the only thing he was good at. Well, okay, uh, Tony, you know what? Why, why don't we talk about, uh, about the interview again? I, I didn't mean to get you off course. I want it live, and I want people to hear it, Fred. Two things, two requests. I don't see what's so hard about that. Well, Tony, honestly, we, we, we think there might be an issue with the language if we agree to do this live what do you mean well you've got a very colorful vocabulary <laughs> Tony. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that well it, it's okay but we we can't put those kind of words out there well, you can understand that. well i won't say them then okay tony but we wouldn't we wouldn't want you to feel inhibited. It, it, well, I wouldn't feel fucking inhibited. I won't say any stupid shit. I understand that there's going to be kids listening. I want to protect kids, too. I want to protect their innocence and their sensibilities. It's important that they listen, because I feel bad about this. But I'm mad, and I deserve to be mad. And this is the Tony, right fucking thing. Tony, why don't you tell me just what this is uh, all fuck about? Fuck these people at Esther House, and fuck the whole corporation. They played God and lost. I'm a man that's fighting for everything I own, sir. Do you have a wife and family, Fred? I sure do, Tony. How many kids you got? We have five. How old are they, Fred? Well, they range in age between 12 and 28. Do you love them? Uh, you better believe I do. Let's say somebody set you up, and they said, we're going to take your car, we're going to take your house, we're going to take your wife, we're going to take your children, and then they're going to laugh at you, Fred. Would you be ready to kill Heckman? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd be awfully mad, sir. Would you be ready to kill Heckman? I don't know if I'd be ready to... But don't lie! Don't lie! Why would you lie? You kill in a minute. They have ruined my life. But I'm a mean motherfucker, baby, and they ain't gonna intimidate me, and they ain't gonna humiliate me. Fred, calm him down. Tony, Tony, let's just... Look, I want to get your side on all of this. Okay? Can I get your side? I'm gonna tell you what. And I'm going to tell you right now, Fred, you talk to whoever you need to talk to over there, but I want this interview and I want it my way. And that means I want it live and I want it heard. Now, I don't know who you have to talk to over there and make that happen, but you make it happen or Dick's last meal will be two slugs through his two front Fred, teeth. Calm him down right now. Who's that? Fred, who is that you're saying your name right now? Uh, that was my producer, Tony. He just poked in his head to tell me my wife's calling. She know you're talking to me? Yes, she does. What does she think about that? Well, to be honest with you, Tony, she wishes it weren't happening tonight. It's our anniversary. <sighs> oh, is that right? Yes, sir, that is right. Well, I, I didn't know that. Well, that's, that's okay, Tony. No, no, it's not okay. It's not okay. Maybe I would have... I would have given it another shot in another day if I'd known. I, 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 I've never been married, Mr. Heckman, and I've never gone steady, but I know that a woman's a beautiful thing that you, you have to be loyal to. I'm sorry about that, Fred. Well, that's, 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 that's okay, Tony. We, we've all got something going on. Yes, sir, we do. Tony, let me ask you, was, was I always... A part of your plan here? Yes, sir. 
You're the best in the business, Fred. Just like I'm the best in the business. And I tell you what, I've been hearing all these reports all day, and every one of them calls me crazy. Every one of them calls me mentally ill. And that's the biggest lie I've ever heard in my life. I have every single one of my faculties, and I have each one sharp as a tack. I am not insane. I do not need psychological probing, and I do not need to be counseled for my course of action. I am a man. A man mad as hell who had everything taken away from me, and I am fighting. The insane don't know when to fight. I know how to fight. I know how to rig up a shotgun, and I know how to rig up a bomb. And I'll say it right now, this was a premeditated act. I'll say that because I know, I know I got cops right outside who keep telling me I can get out of this if I plead insanity, and I am not insane. Okay, all right. Tony, all right, I, I, I believe you. I believe you. I think you are well aware of what you're doing. That's right. Okay, then, Tony, if I can... If I can have a little more time, I can, uh, I can try and do some more negotiating for you on, on, on doing the interview live. Oh, I appreciate that, Fred. Can I talk to Dick real quick? Yep. Yes, sir. It's Fred. Mr. Heckman, it's Dick Hall. Yes, sir. I just wanted to let you know we're here, and we're doing everything we can, and it's all going to work out. Will you call my wife for me, Mr. Heckman? I certainly can do that. What would you like me to say? Just tell her that I love her. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that, Dick. Thank you, sir. You call me soon, Fred. Don't leave me waiting now, you hear? We won't, Tony. He's a sick son of a bitch, isn't he? I'm gonna go talk to Jim. How do you feel about it? I don't feel good, Leo. I do not feel good. Next time on American Hostage. You're about to enter a building wired with bombs. If you want to have this conversation like men, you've got to bring me to your level. I want them to say they cheated me. What we'd love is if you could talk with us after you release Mr. Hall. I thought you respected your listener. I and now you're going to work with these pigs? Father God. Give them peace. What are you praying for? My wife. My kids. What, you forgot about yourself? American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Written by C.D. Carpenter. Directed by Sean Christensen. Produced by Adam Volerich and Brendan Hubbard. Executive produced by John Hamm, Sean Christensen, and Gabriel Mason, starring John Hamm, Carla Gugino, Joe Perino, Dylan Baker, and Becky Ann Baker, with additional performances by James O'Connor, sound design by Brandon Jones, composed by Darren Morsey, editing by Thomas Beach, Sean Christensen, and Adam Volerich, recording and engineering by Dave Williams, mixing, mastering, and additional editing by Nick Masidi. ID Reads by Natalie Prass. For Amazon Music, executive producers are Morgan Jones and Dave Easton. Senior producer is Eliza Mills. Special thanks to Jacob Bronstein, Phil Sanchez, Chris Davis, Jack Parker, Marcelino Villalpando, Stephanie Walkneen, Vlad Norman, Vanessa Rebert, Sam Petherbridge, Kale Bittner, Alice Zoe, Trevor McNeil, Ty Jacobson, Rich Sherman, Marshall Louie, WIBC, Wish TV, and Creative Artists Agency. The next episode will be out in a week. Or you can binge all eight episodes right now on Amazon Music. Or you can listen ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. As promised, enjoy this preview from Badlands' newest season. 
Be sure to follow Badlands on Amazon Music or wherever you listen to podcasts. Why has the grisliest murder in Hollywood's history remained unsolved for 75 years? Which silver screen superstar honed his comedic chops while doing time for slinging cocaine? Which A-list actor's home in the Hollywood Hills played host to one of the most heinous crimes in the 1970s? And how did one movie franchise supposedly curse four different actors, leading all of them to early graves? Hear the unbelievable but true stories behind these questions and more in Badlands Season 3, Hollywood Man. In Badlands Season 3, we're digging into more of Tinseltown's dirty deeds with stories about A-listers whose crimes and career lows were as unbelievable as some of their film's plot twists. Like the late, great Heath Ledger learning how to properly shoot up using a stolen prosthetic arm. Brittany Murphy mysteriously succumbing to a bizarre case of pneumonia at the age of 32. And perennial joker Jack Nicholson wielding a golf club to win an impromptu battle of road rage. Listen to Badlands on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Badlands, where bad can always get worse.